For months, I've been obsessed with Super Juice. I've seen every video, read every book, and combed over every article on the internet. Hours turned into days, days into weeks. At night, I dream of nothing but Super Juice. No, no. And I think I've finally figured it out. In this video, I'm going to share everything I know about Super Juice. Hey. Welcome, my name is Jazz. I'm a bartender and the co-founder of Very Good Drinks. Very Good Drinks is a cocktail test kitchen and content agency that I run with my partner, Demi. I'm so happy that you're here. So nice to meet me. There's timestamps for this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. That was 11 months ago. When I started this video, I had no clue just how deep the citrus rabbit hole was going to go. Since then, I have learned a lot. I'm older, I'm wiser, I'm tired. I have read countless articles, scientific papers. I've DM'd citrus scientists on TikTok. I have moved to the citrus capital of Mexico. And I think it's finally time for me to finish this video. This is my comprehensive video on Super Juice. I've been carrying around that beard for my character for this video for, for a while, so it feels good to get rid of that. So this is a video about Super Juice, but for the sake of context, I wanted to talk about citrus really quickly. Most citrus that we deal with on a daily basis are hybrids of three confirmed origin fruit. We have pomelo, mandarin orange, and citron. Now there are a couple other honorable mentions such as papadea, finger limes, kumquats, but a majority of the commercially available citrus are hybrids of those three fruits. And for the purposes of this video and brevity, we're gonna zero in specifically on the Parisian lime because it's sort of the backbone of a lot of mixology and cocktail culture and it is a hybrid of the three aforementioned like mother fruits so it has aspects of the pomelo the citron and the mandarin all in one fruit it's also the most delicate juice wise the the, the juice is extremely floral and bright but it also degrades really really quickly so it's the perfect one to zero in on for the purposes of explaining super juice what is super juice? Super juice is a kind of juice, yeah, but it's also a technique, and it's a technique for lengthening and preserving the fresh flavor of citrus by making an acid solution and then flavoring that solution with the essential oils in the peel and the juice itself from the fruit, emulsifying it all together, making this super juice. It is not the same as preserved or pasteurized lime or lemon juice that you might find in the grocery store and the little plastic lemons. It is something kind of newer on the scene and it's a total game changer. And uh, yeah, that's why we're here. All right, so cool, super juice, cool new technique, yada yada. Why do we care? Well, I'll tell you. With traditional juicing, you've all been there, you've all done it, you slice the, the, the lime in half, you, you squeeze it, you juice it. Maybe you're like me and you like really bring it out for as much as you possibly can. Then you're left with this little button. Typically it gets thrown in the trash. In fact, 50% of all citrus mass in the entire United States is thrown in the trash. Devastating, devastating news. But citrus has a lot more to give in that little butthole peel than you would think. That's where super juice comes in. We are taking the other half of the citrus and using that extremely fragrant essential oil filled skin of the citrus and we're emulsifying it into a solution of malic acid, citric acid, and water along with the juice from the fruit itself. Putting it all together it gives us this much more powerful, flavorful, and longer lasting juice. So some of the benefits of Super Juice would include a more punchy lime flavor because of the utilization of the oil in the peel, a longer shelf life because of the lower levels of the components of lime 
that make it go bad, which are oxidization and specifically succinic acid. So rather than the lime going bad after a couple of days, we can get a couple of weeks out of it. After seven days, the juice starts to change flavor a little bit, but it's still totally fine. Once you hit the 10 day mark, that's when it's a little bit more questionable. It's like a day to day basis type of thing. I like to make a bigger batch and freeze a majority of it and just thaw out little squeezy bottles as I need them. They last kind of like indefinitely in the, in the freezer. So uh, yeah, uh, it's the longevity talk. Back to the video. Lastly, it is far more sustainable because we are using more of the fruit, getting more out of every single piece of fruit that comes our way. This has huge implications in the bar world specifically, but I mean, it has implications in kitchens everywhere and it could potentially be a huge money saver, a huge time saver, reduce the waste of citrus by like quite a lot. This is why I feel so passionately about it. It's important for us to like spread the news here this is like just an overall in like kind of every way better practice than what we've been doing for a really long time while human beings have been preserving fruit and citrus for forever we are going to talk about some of the big players in the world of preserving citrus throughout history that helped us get to right now. Shout out to Louis Pasteur, who is the father of modern germ theory, fermentation, and pasteurization. That was a huge, that was a huge one. First big name on the list, Lachlan Rose, 1867. We have Rose's Lime Juice, you know it. You've seen it. Lachlan is a dude who starts preserving limes with sugar rather than alcohol as was previously done. Realizes that a lot more people can enjoy it this way and starts making a bunch of money and preventing scurvy all over the place. We fast forward to 2014. <laughs> We're just gonna skip over like hundreds of years. Liquid Intelligence, one of the, you know, one of the goats there with Dave Arnold making lime strength water. We get a detailed recipe for lime solution. It's a 6% acid ratio of citric and malic, two parts citric, one part malic, and it is a stand-in for real lime juice. A year later, we have the first mention of oleo citrate from Bitter Cube, who is using it to approximate a sweet and sour for kegged cocktails. 2016, we have Ian Griffiths and Kelsey Ramage of the Trash Tiki Movement, who are pioneering use of the entire citrus and start to be big proponents of what is called citrus stock, where they're using the entire citrus along with powdered acids and sugar to create a you know, sweet and sour essentially. So as you can see, over the course of history, there have been many strides in the realm of preserving citrus. All of these techniques start to stack on top of each other and bring us to 2020. It's the first time we're hearing about Super Juice at a bar expo in Kentucky. A guy named Nickel Morris in partnership with Ryan LeClaire release a recipe for Super Juice, they talk about it on the PCW YouTube channel. Well, what's, what is lime juice, right? Like Ryan is honestly kind of responsible for the final thing. And you know, there's a niche group of bartenders who are very, very interested in it. And uh, it, you know, it's, it's an interesting idea. People haven't really heard much about uh, oleo citrate, yada, yada. Meanwhile, in 2020 in Europe, one of my favorite bartenders, Remy Savage, starts making this thing called infinite lime, which is like a shelf stable lime juice. And he takes old lime juice and puts it in a rotovap or a rotary evaporator, creating this lime distillate, which just has the aromatics of lime and none of the flavor. Then he adds the acids and salt and sugar back to it to create a completely shelf stable lime juice. So rad. Fast forward a couple years later, and a guy that we all know and love, Mr. Kevin Koss, comes out with his Super Juice video on YouTube, February 2022, kind of building upon the Bar Expo recipe and using a bit of that liquid intelligence Dave Arnold recipe to create his own version of Super Juice. And hundreds of thousands of people see this video. It's starting to build and we get a little bit more of a mainstream awareness of Super Juice at this point. More and more people 
people start to take notice of Super Juice. Much to the chagrin of Nickel Morris, who calls Kevin's recipe a literal bad copy and um, has some has some things to say about his video. Even though Kevin like definitely, I'm just spilling the tea by the way. Even though Kevin like definitely like mentions Nickel in the video and gives him full credit for his contributions, Nickel has some issues with uh, saying basically Kevin has like ripped him off and stolen his ideas, which honestly like we could make a whole other video about bartenders and intellectual property and how you can't really own a recipe we're all just sort of building off of each other's work and that's what was happening in my opinion with Kevin the main things to know here is that bar expos recipe is based off of mass spectrometry and then we have Kevin's which is based in the lime solution from liquid intelligence by Dave Arnold that kind of leads me into the components of super juice the ratios how do they kind of work with each other to create different outcomes? And how have I used these two recipes to sort of create my own perfect super juice recipe? So I guess the, this is the part where I get into that part, where I, where I talk about that. Before we get into the numbers part of this video, the nitty gritty, I wanted to uh, tell you guys, if you're watching this video, the Super Juice Calculator is out. The very good Super Juice Calculator is up and running. So you can scan this QR code and go to our website. It is free. It's always free. That's my vow to you. And, um, or you can go to the description. There's a, there's a link, Super Juice Calculator. We have a number of different citrus, our recipes for the different super juices go make some super juice okay back to the video this is the portion of the video where i discuss the recipes and it's going to get a little bit uh there's numbers and stuff on this side we have bar expo's recipe that they posted to their instagram and on this side we have kevin costa's recipe from his calculator on his website both recipes i'm using about 100 grams of peel as the constant reference point when we put these side by side you can see there's some key differences here on the bar expo side if we look at the amount of peels to water ratio we see that there is quite a higher number of peels by weight to water it's actually 10 percent versus kevin's which is a lot more water and a lot less peel he's calling for 1666 grams of water so over half a liter uh more water so it's going to give you also like a higher yield which is important to note that's going to translate to a little bit less lime flavor emulsified into the final juice more peel equals more lime flavor really quickly on ascorbic acid there's some main acids in citrus ascorbic is vitamin c you probably know citrus is really high in vitamin c well it turns out 75 percent of the ascorbic acid in lime is in the peel so when we're adding this peel in we're also adding in 75 percent of the lime's total ascorbic acid into solution ascorbic acid is also an important antioxidant agent in the juice so it's also adding to the shelf life and in our tests we found that there is a cap for this um adding more peel isn't like a the more you add the more it, it is tasty you can go too far and it becomes it tastes like cleaner or something it's, it's actually pretty awful but we did really enjoy the level of lime peel flavor that we got in the expo recipe in our blind tasting Next order of business is the acids. With the Expo version, we have a much higher level of citric versus malic. Whereas on Kevin's side, he's using the uh, Liquid Intelligence Dave Arnold ratios of two parts citric, one part malic in a 6% ratio. The 6% on this side is gonna be a lot more sour and tart versus the 5.3% level of acid on the Expo side. In our blind tasting, we found that the 5.3% juice was not really tart enough to balance out a daiquiri. The daiquiris were coming out really sweet and uh, we, we much preferred the level of acid in the Kevin Koss version. As you can see, there are a few different variables that change the juice in different ways. And I took both these recipes and what I liked about both of them, kind of put them together and 
This is essentially uh, the recipe I was working with for the last year or so. We took the higher number of peels to get more lime flavor. In doing this, we sacrificed a little bit of yield, but we kept the 6% acid ratio so that we could use this as a one-to-one -one replacement for fresh lime juice. When I say 6%, I'm talking about 6% of the water that we're using. Dave Arnold's recipe calls for 6% of the total solution. So if we were to calculate it out that way of the total, we're sitting at more like 5.7% total acidity, not including the ascorbic acid that we added from the peels. So that puts us kind of right in the middle between Nicole Morris and Bar Expo's recipe and Kevin Koss slash Dave Arnold. Yeah. Some additions that I've added recently, a little bit of sugar, about 1%. In uh, natural lime juice, you have somewhere around 2% sugar in real lime juice. So we're using about half the amount of sugar that you would find in actual lime. In Kevin's video, he like specifically omits sugar for fear of it like fermenting, making the juice go bad faster. And in my testing, this is true. It does tend to go bad slightly faster than without sugar. But on the plus side of this, the sugar really rounds off some of those really harsh acid flavors. When you uh, make super juice, a lot of times you can taste that really intense citric and malic raw acid flavor. It tastes like maybe sucking on like a, like a warhead or something. It's a little unnatural sometimes just when you taste it by itself. So the sugar is there to like really round it off. I've also been experimenting with adding just a tiny, tiny bit of salt as well for the same reason the salt not only boosts the flavor a little bit but also rounds off that harsh acid it's sort of like a trick of the palate mm, yeah okay another really key revelation that i had recently is the whole oleo citrate situation. Common practice so far has been to use the peels and the powdered acids to make an oleo citrate. And I was doing it this way for quite some time. Essentially, you put the powder in with the sugar, just like an oleo saccharum. It sits for like an hour or two and it pulls all the oils out of the peel. Then you go ahead and like add the water and emulsify it all together, strain it off. Um, this isn't necessary. It turns out you can just like add everything into a container and blend it up. And if you blend it for a good minute or so, it will like fully break up the peel and emulsify all the oil. And it doesn't seem to make like any difference at all other than maybe a little bit less bitter. Super important also like when you're peeling to get as little pith as possible. Can I clock out? This is all very confusing. I get it. Okay. Some key things, just rapid fire. This is key. This is key shit. Okay. The higher than the amount of peels equals more lime oil in the juice equals more flavor up to a point that it turns into pine salt. And we have a very specific ratio between citric and malic acid. For me, two parts citric and one part malic gives that tart lemony flavor with a good amount of that drying sour lime flavor. So the two to one ratio is like, that's the one for me. Okay. 6% by weight acid to water. 6% of the total juice is acid. This is about as close as it gets to real citrus juice. In actual citrus juice, there is a range. I mean, some limes are a bit tart. About 6% will get you a juice that you can use as a one-to-one -one replacement for real juice. It will balance the daiquiri properly and it, yeah, you can use it. You can actually use it in like cocktails. I'm telling you all this so that you can like make your own decisions here. Kevin's recipe has a lot of value in that it is the recipe that yields the largest amount of juice. So if you're running a bar program or whatever, like that's obviously like hugely important. The the yield is, is hugely important. My recipe is really in search of the most delicious juice alternative that I can get. So in doing that, I have added a couple of extra things that I've picked up from different places. That's what I've been rolling with. I think it's like really good. I use the leftover peel to make syrups, namely chongs. I use those chongs to make fermented cordials, fermenty sodies and stuff. Maybe I'll make a video about that at uh, some other time. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's it. Can, can, will you let me go now? This concludes the super juice video. It's been a real labor of love. 
a year in the making and I can't believe it's finally over. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments and I will do my best to get back with you and answer those. If you enjoyed this video at all, please consider subscribing. We make drink content. Thanks for being here. Bye. Come on, birdie.